very old engines. Dear friends, 100 years ago, when Scarlowy and Reneus first arrived on their railway, they were young and silly. Scarlowy was sulky and bouncy. He and Reneus quarreled. But they learned since, and the owner had just given them a lovely 100th birthday. Tally Lin and Dolcock and Tawan are 100 too. How about going to wish them many happy returns? The author, the Reverend Wilbert Audrey. Crosspatch Scarlowy made a face. Not again, Nancy, please. Just a teeny polish, she coaxed. You must look nice for your 100th birthday. I am nice. You're just a fusspot. And you're a horrid old crosspatch. Nancy polished him vigorously. Scarlowy smiled. Nancy, he said, I really was a crosspatch once. Shall I tell you? Yes, please. Well, calm down. I can't tell it properly while you're fussing up there. Just five minutes then. No longer. Nancy sat down on a box, and the old engine began. Tally Lin, Dolcock, Reneus and I were built together in England. Who, asked Nancy, are Tally Lin and Dolcock? Their railway is in turn in Wales, and they are 102. They were green, and we were red. Tally Lin and I had four wheels then, and no cab. We thought we were wonderful, and talked about how splendid we'd look pulling coaches. What about trucks? asked Nancy. Scarlowy chuckled. We had no use for them, he said. I was finished first, and sent away on a ship. I didn't like that. It wobbled dreadfully. At the port, the big railway kept me waiting. They had no cranes to lift me out. It wasn't the Fat Controller's railway then. He would have managed it much better. What did they do? asked Nancy. They used the ship's derricks. They nearly turned me upside down, said Scarlowy indignantly, and left me hanging while they arranged the truck. You must have looked funny, gurgled Nancy. Yes, and I felt it too. I got crosser and crosser. They fastened me to the truck at last, and an engine took me away. His name was Neil. He was ugly, but kind, and we were soon friends. So you're bound for the wee railway, he said. You must put some order into those trucks. The harvest they make, you'd hardly believe. I didn't like the sound of that. But I was too tired to say anything. Plenty of people were waiting when we got there, but they weren't used to engines, and it was dark before I was on my rails. Then they left me, lonely and unhappy, and wishing for Reneus to come. Trucks were everywhere the next morning. Suddenly, with a rattle and a roar, a train of loaded ones came in. I was surprised. There's no engine, I said. A workman laughed. They've come down by gravity, he said. The empty ones need pulling up, though. That's why you have come. But can't they go up by gra... Whatever it was you said? Gravity only brings things down. We need horses or engines like you to pull them up. What? Have I to pull trucks? Of course. I won't. I want coaches. He just laughed and walked away. Soon, Mr. Mack, the manager, arrived with some men. He showed them my parts from a book. We're going to steam you, Scarlowy, he said. Can I pull coaches, sir? No, certainly not. I gave him such a look. They didn't understand engines, so it was easy. My fire wouldn't burn, and I made no steam. I just blew smoke at them. They called me bad names, but I didn't care. Next day, they tried again. And the next. And the next. I just gave them my look and wouldn't do a thing. At last, the manager said, Very well, be a crosspatch, but we're not going to look at your sulky face all day. We'll cover you up and leave you until you're a better engine. They did so too, chuckled Scarlowy. They fetched a big tarpaulin and covered me right up. I didn't like that at all. I think it serves you right, said Nancy severely. Never mind her, Scarlowy. Please tell us what happened next. 
Nancy turned in surprise. A group of people had quietly come up to listen while Scarlowy was telling her his story. Bucking Bronco. I was lonely and miserable, Scarlowy continued, till at last the manager came. I hope now that you are a better engine. Yes, sir. Please, sir, because I have asked Mr. Bobby to come and look after you. Mr. Bobby had helped to build me in England. I liked him, so we soon had steam up. Come on, Scarlowy, he said. We must help the workmen finish the line before the inspector comes. I didn't mind pulling trucks with Mr. Bobby, and we worked so hard that by the time Reneus arrived, the line was ready. Reneus never got so excited and bouncy as I did. He worked without hurry or fuss. Trucks often played tricks on me to make me cross, but they soon found that teasing Reneus was a mistake. He was shunting one day when I came alongside. I was excited. I am pulling the director's train, I said, and taking the inspector tomorrow. Think of that, Reneus pondered. You mind your bucks and bounces then, Scarlowy, he said at last. The directors won't like them. Pooh, I snorted, and bounced away to find the coaches. <coughs> I whistled. Hello, girls. Who is it? Angus's deep voice bellowed from behind the shed. It's an engine, whispered Beatrice, the guard's van. He's come to take us out. Beware of strange engines, warned Angus. We must be on our guard. Our guard has just come, giggled Beatrice. Jemima and Ruth, the other coaches, sighed with relief. I pulled them all happily to the station. Angus, still suspicious, kept muttering, Be on your guard! Be on your guard! But I was too excited to listen. It might have been better if I had. I was sizzling with excitement as I ran round and bat down on Angus. It's fun, it's fun, I chortled. You may look harmless, she whispered, but we'll watch you, we'll watch you. She took me quite aback. But even Angus couldn't complain about our upward journey. We stopped at every station and the directors got out to admire the arrangements. Everything went well. I forgot about Angus and the manager, smiling, joined us on the footplate for the journey home. It looks so easy, Mr. Bobby, he said as we rode gently down. Can I drive him, please? We were running nicely. First rate, first rate, I hissed happily, gaining speed, and all-knowing, I began to bounce. The manager, alarmed, closed my regulator. Too quickly and too much. Angus's buffers clashed. He's playing tricks. Bump him, girls. Bump him! They surged against me, urging me on. I bounced and lurched. I couldn't help it. The manager lost his footing, grabbed wildly for a handhold, and disappeared. <coughs> Brakes, guard, please! Mr. Bobby seized my controls, stopped the train, and looked back. Two legs waved wildly from a bush. The manager was unhurt, but very cross. I'll not ride that bucking bronco again, he said. He sat in Beatrice for the rest of the journey. The directors complained that they had been badly shaken. They said it was my fault. Reneus will take the inspector tomorrow, they ordered. You will stay out of sight in the shed. But late that evening, the manager came. I'm sorry, sir. I did try to be good. It wasn't your fault, Scarlowy. I'm sorry I was cross. We must do what the directors say now, but I'll make it up to you later. The inspector was pleased with Reneus. You've done very well, he said kindly. For a new engine, he told the directors about some improvements that were needed. But, he went on, on the whole, your arrangements are good. He came to see me, and the directors told him what they thought had happened. I think, gentlemen, he said, that you are mistaken. Scarlowy should prove to be a useful engine, but he needs another pair of wheels. Take my advice and have them fitted. Then you will see the difference. Good day. Stick in the mud.
The manager was as good as his word. Scarlowy continued, "I came home from the works with six wheels and a cab." A cab is the latest thing for engines," he told me. "I hope it will cheer you up after your disappointment." Reneus chuckled. It cheered him up too much, and those silly coaches made him worse. Such a handsome engine! They chittered. Six wheels and a cab. So distinguished, my dears. It's a pleasure to see him. He soon got too big for his wheels. Scarlowy smiled ruefully. I did so too," he said. "Go on, Reneus." He boasted about his cab till I was tired," said Reneus. "You should get one like me and be up to date," he would tell me. "No, thank you. You look like a snail with that house on your back. You don't go much faster either." "Slow, am I? Let me tell you, who was late three times last week? Oh, it's no use talking. You are just an old stick in the mud." He called me more names, and we quarrelled. We ended up back to back, not speaking. It went on for days and days. One dark Monday morning, Scarlowy had to take the workman's train to the quarry. It had rained for three days. You always pick on me for wet days, he complained. You said, Mister Bobby, have got a cab to keep us dry. Come on. Scarlowy slipped and snorted on the damp rails. He began to wonder if cabs were worth it. An hour later, I was warming up when Scarlowy's guard came coasting down in an empty truck. He stopped by our shed. There's a landslide beyond the tunnel, he said. Scarlowy ran into it. He's stuck. Show a wheel, Reneus. Look lively. I'm sorry, Mr. Peter, sir, but that Scarlowy is too swanky. He says I must stick in the mud. He can jolly well stick in the mud himself. It serves him right. But went on my driver. There's poor Mr. Bobby and the quarryman. Does it serve them right too? The guard says the mud is like treacle. Oh dear, I said. That will never do. We must save them before they get sucked in. And off we puffed with two trucks and some workmen. Things weren't too bad after all. The men had partly cleared the line and had levered Scarlowy back. He was hissing and grumbling dreadfully, but we didn't listen to him. We cleared the rest of the line, and I pushed Scarlowy out of the way before taking the quarrymen to work. Mister Bobby cleaned and oiled his wheels and motion so that when I returned with the coaches, I could help him back to the shed. I'm sorry I was swanky," he said at last. "Thank you for helping me." "Not at all," I said. "But I was still cross." Then Scarlowy began to laugh. "I am the stick in the mud after all," he gurgled helplessly. "Not you." I laughed too. I couldn't help it. He looked so funny. We were laughing when the cleaners came. We were still laughing when they left. Poor engines, they said, tapping their foreheads. But we weren't mad. We'd learned sense, and we've been firm friends ever since. It was nearly dark. The listeners stirred and stretched. Thank you, Scarlowy and Reneus," they said. "Now that you've told us all about the old days, we can give you both a splendid birthday next week." Duck and Dukes. But I keep telling you," said Duck. "There are no Dukes. They were fine and stately, but they've all been scrapped." Peter Sam goggled in horror. This is dreadful," he wailed. "The thing controller said the owner said the duke said he was coming to our centenary to open the extension around the lake, and now he's scrapped, and Scarlowy's and Reneus's birthday will be spoiled. Oh dear, oh dear!" He bustled away with his empty coaches to tell his bad news. "I think," said Scarlowy, "that Doc was pulling your wheels." No, Scarlowy. He was quite serious. He always jokes like that," chuckled Scarlowy. But no one agreed, and they argued so loudly that the thing controller came to stop their noise. They told him about Duck, but he paid no attention. I have no time for his nonsense now," he snapped. "There's a change in tomorrow's work." 
Scarlowy, you'll beat the Duke at eleven o'clock instead of half past ten. And he hurried away. If there is a Duke, said Duncan, but they were all too tired to argue any more. They spent a gloomy night, but cheered up the next morning when the cleaners greeted the birthday engines with an all metal band. Drivers and firemen joined in, and even the thin controller banged a metal plate as loudly as anyone. The engines punctuated the music with their whistles. The owner laughed and held his ears. Presently, he looked at his watch. That's enough," he ordered. So Rusty, Sir Handel, and Duncan went at once to find their coaches. Visitors crowded the big station. They wanted to go to places along the line to watch the celebrations. Peter, Sam, and Reneus had carefully practiced their parts. Passengers in Angus, Ruth, Lucy, Jemima, and Beatrice all wore clothes of 1865. Reneus had to pull them behind Peter Sam's television train, not too close and not too far away, so that the cameramen could take their pictures. Visitors waved as they went by, and at last they reached the special sidings near the extension, where they settled down to wait. Listen," said Peter Sam at last. "Here's Scarlowy. They're cheering him." "Good," answered Reneus. "Perhaps that will make up for his disappointment over Duke." Scarlowy wasn't disappointed at all. "I've brought the Duke. I've brought the Duke. I've brought the Duke. I've brought the Duke." He puffed and triumphantly came to stand between the two trains. A distinguished-looking man stepped out, climbed to Scarlowy's footplate, and drove him on the new line round the lake and back again. Then, standing on Scarlowy's front buffer beam, he said, "Ladies, gentlemen, and engines, I have pleasure in declaring your lovely lakeside loop line now open." Peter Sam could bear it no longer. "Excuse me, Sir Duke," he burst out. "Are you real?" There was a shocked silence. The Duke smiled. Scarlowy said, "You've been listening to Duck." He answered, "Duck thinks Dukes were great Western engines, but Dukes are really people." I am very happy to assure you, Peter Sam, that I am a real live Duke. I'll give Duck Dukes," muttered Peter Sam, but he was sternly hushed. The Duke turned over to the owner. I congratulate you, sir, on your remarkable railway. It must be a record indeed to have two locomotives in regular service and both a hundred years old. Long life, then a good running to Scarlowy and Reneus, your famous old engines. The cheering and clapping died away. Speech! Shouted someone, and the cry was taken up. Go on, Reneus! Whispered the owner. So rather nervously, the old engine began. Thank you, Your Grace, and everyone for your kind wishes. You've given us both a lovely one hundredth birthday. But Your Grace, Scarlowy, and I aren't the only record engines. We've got two twin brothers. Tally Lin and Goldcock were built at the same time as us, so they are a hundred too, and they are still at work. They are railways at Toyin in Wales. Please go and see them, Your Grace, and everybody, and wish them many happy returns from Scarlowy and Reneus, their little old twins.